Hello everyone, welcome to the DH Education Podcast, your program to be updated on digital heritage education domain. I'm your host, Raul Gomez Hernandez, and I'm glad to be here with you. In the 10th episode of this podcast, we will talk with Jasper Pisser about the relevance of digital engagement for involving your stakeholders to succeed on your educational projects. The key elements to produce digital engagement with your audience based on the digital engagement framework, the way to apply it in a small and medium digital project, and his recommendation to produce the best engageable heritage education experience for young people. Stay to the end and discover some innovative projects and book recommendations to explore more around this topic. Digital engagement is defined as the capacity of keeping the interest of someone on something through digital technologies. As is explained in week 6, there are three dimensions of engagement. Behavioral engagement, where participants are more motivated. Emotional engagement, where participants have powerful affective relationships like interest, enjoyment, or a sense of belonging. And cognitive engagement, where the participant impact on the project is bigger, as they try to be more involved. Three of them can be developed with digital means, as it is the relationship between the content and the technological means which engage with the audience. As young people use technology very often, it is the way the content is displayed that engages them, apart from other disruptive and technological advices, which attract them due to the newness. In this process, digital storytelling, the gamification processes, the capacity of immersion, and the ways of learning and perceiving all the information are really important. For this reason, digital engagement is the key process for connecting with young people very quickly, if the strategy is well developed. After this introduction, let me repose some questions to discuss today with our speaker. How digital engagement can be produced? How is it possible to develop a successful digital engagement strategy to engage with young people through heritage education resources? This week, I would like to talk with Jasper Visser about it. Hello, Jasper. Thank you very much for coming to this podcast. Hi, Rul. It's a pleasure to be here. Let me introduce yourself a bit to the audience. Jasper Pisser is a partner in the consultancy boutique Fis Plus Stam and project director of the Stinkton 2030. He's committed to a better and more sustainable world through storytelling, art and culture and community engagement. As a strategic advisor and facilitator, he helps organizations tell their story. Jasper connects ideas and people, creates enthusiasm and energy around causes, and facilitates community and co-creation processes. He combines a background in sustainable development and international relations with extensive international experience within the cultural sector. Jasper has worked for the World Bank, the European Parliament, International Federation of Library Associations and Institutions, Museum of Nature and National Arts Center in Canada, various NGOs, and civil society organizations, among others. Jasper is also co-author of the Quantum Culture, co-developer of Card for Culture and the Digital Engagement Framework, and blogger to the Museum of the Future. In recent years, the active participation of the audiences in the co-creation process of digital collections and editorial content has increased. The capacity of connecting with a broader audience and the opportunities for museums and their educational programs has also grown. In this process, motivation and engagement are interconnected, but there are different concepts. To understand better the relevance of digital engagement in the heritage education domain, could you explain briefly what digital engagement is about and how important it is for involving your stakeholders and your audience to succeed on your digital educational projects? Glad, Ro, for that question. It's a, a very good question, I think. Digital engagement has become a buzzword. It's been for the past 10 years or so, and very few people actually stop and wonder, you know, what does it mean? Uh, 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 what is it? And I think to me, what digital engagement is about is it's the use of digital tools to build a deeper, more profound and longer lasting relationship uh, between an organization and a audience. This audience can be, uh, you know, just visitors or users or, or, or experts, but it can also be uh, volunteers or, or employees or, or other more professional uh, stakeholders. So um, in a way, it's very much related to, to ideas such as community engagement or audience development, uh, but then specifically focused uh, on the use of digital tools. And I think actually in this process, digital is a more complicated word because by now almost all tools are digital. You know, even our conversation right now, even though it's an analog conversation, is is supported by digital tools. In this case, Zoom, uh, which turns my voice into ones and zeros and yours as well. Uh, um, so you could you could argue, and 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 I think in the work we do on digital engagement, 
uh, more and more we see that it's actually become all engagement because almost everything is digital uh, uh, right now. And then, then the second part of your question, you know, is it is it to what extent is it important for involving your stakeholders and and your audience in 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 these projects? I think is it important? Obviously, it is. But especially, I think what we're just starting to understand is the potential engagement, digital engagement, or any form of engagement uh, uh, creates for starting new types of projects, new ideas, new collaborations with uh, professional and, 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 and non-professional stakeholders, as well as, 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 as others in the, in the uh, uh, heritage community. So I would say they're incredibly important. The extent to which the digital is the important part, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, it's just the tools are so terrific that if we use digital tools for engagement, uh, you know, we can do absolutely everything. And, and I think uh, we've seen over the past year, you know, when, when many of us were uh, forced to work from home, to work from, from uh, removed from our institutions, and, and the only tools we had available were, uh, to a large extent, digital tools, we've seen some super exciting engagement projects. And I think these these prove again and again that that um, um, digital engagement has become a core pillar of any organization and, and also of a heritage organization. It's really interesting what you say about what digital engagement is about. This is a way of connecting people from all over the world. And although it's difficult to connect and to know deeply what your audience is, it's easy to try new things, open your projects or your institution to new audiences and diversify your activities. Absolutely, that's that's it's a very good point you make there. And I think just to give an example is yesterday uh, uh, for a project, you know, a new project we're, we're kicking off. It's only going to get, you know, really happening in 2022 or something like that. But uh, it's 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 a project that involves artists and heritage workers and cultural people from cultural organizations, both performing arts and visual arts, as well as researchers, community activists, a whole range of different peoples, right? And uh, normally. In, in pre-digital times, even in times, you know, like just two years ago when, when we had all the tools, but we weren't maybe as comfortable with them as we are right now, bringing that group of people together, or maybe 25 people or so, bringing them together would have meant, you know, one person working for three months, inviting everyone and, and everything. Now, with just one email and, and, and a, a, a Zoom link, uh, we could bring these people together. And we had an amazing... Uh, 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 exchange, uh, started new collaborations, really, you know, in an hour and a half got to a point where, where we know what we're going to do together broadly, and we know who's going to do it. And, and, and scientists have met artists and cultural workers have met uh, activists. And um, I think it's, it's all of us experience this almost on a day-to-day -day basis right now, right? The power of connection through digital media. Um, um, but, but, we have just barely begun to use that power for the organization of, of cultural heritage. After a process of developing by Jim Richardson and Jasper Beser, based on years of experience implementing digital media in arts organizations, the digital engagement framework was launched. At this plane, this framework aims to allow everyone a successful digital engagement strategy in a transversal and scalable way. After this introduction to the digital engagement framework, could you explain more how digital engagement works and what makes an effective digital engagement strategy in the digital heritage education contest? Thank you. That's a, that's a great question. So um, the, the thing we did with the digital engagement framework is, is Jim and I got together and, and we wrote down all the questions that we got asked over years and years of working with, with, with heritage organizations about digital engagement, digital transformation, you know, digital tools. What, what, is, what are all the questions that we asked? And then we started puzzling and puzzling and puzzling until we figure it out, you know, how do these questions relate and how do their answers uh, uh, relate to each other? And what we found is, is that um, there, there's three core concepts, three core ideas within digital uh, engagement. And I think the most important one for now uh, uh, is has to do with the fact that digital engagement is a process. It's a step-by-step -step process where you you start with an audience, a group of people uh, 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 that typically 
are not related at all to your organization or to your ideas. And then in a series of, of coordinated steps, each of them involving specific approaches, specific procedures, specific tools and hardware and software and, and ideology and training and procedures, uh, you take them from being unconnected to your organization to being active for your organization, collaborating with it, supporting it. And what we found is that these are four steps. We call them REITs, Interest, Involve, and Activate, but you can give them different names. Each of these four steps is equally important. If you skip one, your digital engagement project will not succeed. Um, and you have to do them every single time. Like you have to design procedures and processes to do that within your organization. And, and, and what the digital engagement framework does is it, is it helps organizations come up with all the structures and procedures and, and technologies needed to continue this engagement process uh, um, uh, forever for a wide range of different projects and to also ensure that different engagement projects, because every organization typically does you know more than one thing, uh, every uh, uh, engagement process actually builds together towards the, the goals of the organization instead of sometimes you know them working against each other or, or opposing each other or or uh, uh, not using each other enough to to be successful and uh, later on you know this so this is the core of the digital engagement I think it's it's developing the relationship with your audience step by step in structured and methodological method methodological approach um, later on we discovered that there are some additional tricks and tools that that you can use to to improve that um, we have a value exchange model uh, 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 that helps you think about what is the question you can ask your audience we have certain other models and and and, and tools that that help an organization translate this process into into a strategy but at its heart it's about these steps taking people from, you know, being unconnected to an organization to being active for or within uh, a, an organization. Hmm. This toolkit sounds really exciting. It's really great to have a methodology to understand how to work with your stakeholders to create a great digital engagement strategy. I think it can be very useful for all the educational projects using cultural heritage independently of the project size. COVID-19 pandemic has boosted the digital transformation of museums. In this trend, museum education has become more digital, connecting with young audiences through social media content, gamify activities, animated YouTube videos, and many other activities. Focusing on this trend, could you tell us how teachers, museum educators, and museum content producers can apply the digital engagement framework in a small and medium digital project to get a successful engagement with young people through digital heritage education resources? Absolutely, thank you, and 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 I think it's very uh, again a very good question because it points at at the fact that you know we typically think of digital engagement as large scale projects with with big budgets and 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 a lot of people involved, but most digital engagement, most museum digital engagement, is actually small or medium sized, right? It's it's small budget tiny interactions with the audience and and so how can how can people use the digital engagement framework in these these tiny projects and let's just imagine right it's it's a a, a tiny project being a survey you want to do about about your local community or or a, a, a micro collecting uh, exercise for instance collecting covid stories or i'm just making things up as, as we go along well again what the digital engagement framework does it is it helps you go from this idea imagine you you want to collect COVID stories in your neighborhood, right? You want to uh, uh, collect the responses people have to the COVID pandemic and, and, and how it affected their lives. Well, you could go out and just uh, ask on Twitter or, 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 or Instagram and, and, and just tell people, hey, I'll write us your story. And you'll see that you, you get maybe three or four answers and that's it. And, and what the digital engagement framework does is it helps you think about, all right, so this is the question. We want these COVID stories. Now, what are all the steps we need to go through to actually get as many of these stories as possible and to also use this collecting process as a means to connect with our community, with our neighbors, uh, uh, maybe uh, 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 get more visitors or new sponsors or other uh, develop other relations with with the people around us and and what it'll help you do is 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 uh, 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 schedule both or and plan and structure both the interaction as well as the the 
the tools and support mechanisms within the organization you need. So in the in the collecting example, right? It's it's what you'll do is is you'll you'll start with the the process I just uh, explained, where you take a step by step approach towards the relationship with your audience. So you think like, right? So first reaching people how are we going to reach the people with the best COVID stories is that through our social media or can we better go on the street right and and ask people there or is there a, a local newspaper that that reaches out to a lot of people so who do we need to partner with to reach out to them then you know what are we going to say tell them and, and what are we going to share with them to build a relationship then how are we going to ask the question for the story and how are we going to support them to hand it in and what do we do with the stories afterwards but while you design this interaction, uh, the digital engagement framework also ensures that you think of, all right, so what do we need in terms of uh, storing these stories, right? How does the copyright uh, situation arrange? What, uh, what are all the, the other nitty gritty details that we need to think about when we design a project like this? And we developed the digital engagement framework so that we don't have to answer these questions. You don't have to hire a, an expensive consultant to take you through this, but you can build on the on the experience of of others in the sector, uh, uh, and and you can use the lessons learned in all these projects to design a better project yourself. Um, so so it's basically just a step by step recipe for making your project slightly more likely to to succeed. Thank you for those recommendations. They are very useful for the audience because they mostly have a small project, as you say. Also, the digital heritage education domain is growing, so that's a good way to start working on it. Well, we have talked about the relevance of digital engagement to succeed in digital education projects. Key elements of digital engagement and their implementation, development, and launch of small and medium digital projects. To end this talk, I would like to talk with you about how digital engagement can be applied in a practical way. So, could you tell the listeners which are your recommendations to produce the best engageable heritage education experience for young people? One of the things that always surprises me when I when I do this is is uh, a lot of people, a lot of heritage professionals, they want to work with young people digitally, and and very few of them actually have involved themselves in their world. So, uh, if you want to make great content, great digital engageable content for young people, go and live their life. And with that, I mean, if you want to build a game, if you want to gamify ex an experience, don't trust the keynote presentation you saw at a conference or, or the consultant who comes by and, 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 and gives to a workshop, but go and, and, and download a few AAA games uh, on your PS5 and, and play them and, and um, uh, uh, try and understand them, try and see the opportunities in them. Talk with young children, right? I, I have, a, I have a, a golden rule that is, if I, if I work on a cultural uh, digital project and the influencers or the people in, I, I know the influencers in the, the app, it's probably not a good app because their language, the young people's culture, ideas, who they listen to, it's completely removed from, from, from my world. So um, ask them. Work with, you know, if you want to work with 10 year olds on a digital engagement project, ask them what, what you know, what are you looking at on, on YouTube? What is what is good? What isn't? Ask them to, to play this role. Uh, and I think that the, the, the way to distinguish a good project from a bad project is good projects. They start from the audience they intend to serve. Bad projects start from an idea or a consultant or a, or a, or a, or a, a, a conference uh, where where an idea was shared that has very little relevance to the people actually actually on the street. And th this also makes my own work uh, very exciting because I have to continuously learn new things. It also makes it very hard because, you know, we work all over the world and, and, and the way young people interact with, with culture and heritage is different from, you know, one situation to the next and can be very different but depending on time and place and their educational level, the type of neighborhood they're in, the city they live in, the, the social and, and, and political environment they, they grow up in. And, and all of you need to take into account all of that. And, and I think we're good at that. I think typically cultural heritage professionals are very sensitive people. They, they know how to pay attention to little details. Um, and if you apply those skills to your audience, 
to understanding your audience, studying your audience, working with your audience, I think you're, you're, you're two, three steps ahead of the competition when it comes to developing uh, highly engageable heritage uh, 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 content online. I agree with you. That's sadly what I think, because understanding how your audience is must be always the best way to understand their preferences and to connect with them. I think doing suppositions or thinking what this should be is the wrong way. For example, in the last two weeks, a survey has been undertaken within the framework of this project to understand the state of digital heritage educational resources and platforms for young people in European museums, taking the point of view of the four stakeholders involved in it. The question related to young people were about their cultural habits, their cultural use of internet and digital cultural heritage education and their answers were very revealing. So we must definitely ask our audience and imply it in the whole process. It sounds exciting. I'm, I'm very curious, looking forward to the results. Thank you. Of course, I let you know as soon as they have published. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to talk with you and know more about how to develop an effective digital engagement strategy for connecting with young people through digital heritage educational projects and resources. Thank you, Raul. It was a pleasure to be here. If you would like to learn more about how to develop a detailed engagement strategy successfully, I recommend you to read a post published in the Arts Management and Technology Laboratory blog titled Detailed Engagement Strategies for the 21st Century Museum in 2019. To learn how to succeed in development of detailed engagement strategy, I suggest you to read the toolkit published by the Detailed Engagement Framework titled Detailed Engagement in Culture, Heritage and the Arts written by Jesper Visser and Jim Richardson in 2013. If you want to know European projects working on digital engagement ideas for cultural heritage, I recommend you visit the Creative Museum Project website. It aims to explore and inform the connection between our cultural organizations and their communities by capitalizing on the emergence of new and democratizing digital technologies. It seeks to extend the language of engagement through the medium of accessible, customizable and personal digital experience. The researchers have published four toolkits in the website and some case studies and good practices of creative museums. Another interesting project is the GIF project. The project brings together internationally renowned artists, designers, museum professionals and researchers to help museums create hybrid experience, experience that combine the physical and digital to create personal encounters with cultural heritage. The website of the project is a repository of digital tools and planning tools for improving digital engagement in physical spaces. Thank you very much for being today with Jasper Pisser and me in this podcast. Next week, a new expert will come and a new topic will be. Find all the resources from the topics we talk about in this podcast on the resource section of the DH Education blog. If you like this podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel, share with your colleagues, follow the podcast on Spotify, iBox, or any platform you listen to, and follow the projects on social media. See you next week.